From the darkest corners of Tumblr comes a podcast where we take two of your favorite fictional characters, get them together, and we ask, do we ship it? Hey guys, welcome back to Ships in the Night. I'm Zach Wilson. And I'm Greg Goodness. Just getting back from a movie-going experience unlike any other. It felt like a life-changing movie. Ghoulish makeup. Tales of the underclass rising up and taking a new place in society. Of course we're talking about Downton Abbey. That's right, the <laughs> servants are now becoming the upper house masters. I didn't watch the original <laughs> show, Zach. I know very little about what's going on there. Nor do I think you really watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are excited to do another episode of Crazy Ships, and I'm very excited to welcome our guest for this episode. He is a writer, a producer, a host. It's Matt Key. Hey, everybody. And Matt. that's me. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Dude, I, I'm sorry it took me so long to get in here. This is going to be a lot of fun. No, this is going to be a blast. And people have sent us ships that I've literally been like, oh, I'm going to put this aside mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. a specific guest. And one of those we are tackling today. Yes. Uh, cannot wait. Our first ship was sent to us by at Becca the Wits on Twitter. Becca wants us to investigate Doctor Strange mm -hmm. and Doctor House. <laughs> for, for anyone who's not familiar with you, Matt, you yeah. are, I would say, obsessed with Doctor Strange. Would that, be putting I think it that's fair. Nicely, <laughs> I think that's fair. When you guys hear that, what are your first reactions? That they are diametrically opposed to each other by virtue <laughs> of the fact that they are the same person in a lot of ways. They are very similar. They're both obviously medical doctors. Uh -huh. They're the top in their field. Uh -huh. Not this, not necessarily the same field. Dr. Strange was a surgeon. He was a top surgeon. Dr. A House was a... Specifically, yes. a neurosurgeon. Uh, Dr. House, not a surgeon, but a diagnosis diagnostician yeah that's his specialty is sherlock holmes diagnosis yeah. yeah you've got the giggle giggle disease <laughs> no that's from his thyroid <laughs> yeah. maybe that's where the meat cute comes in maybe they Ooh. were they worked at the same hospital they when so, okay but is dr strange a neurosurgeon or is he the sorcerer supreme at this point i'm saying this is before he becomes sorcerer supreme so th Ooh, so this is like this is interesting they okay. knew each other once upon a time and then dr strange went off got all mystical uh-huh and then we'll have to get them back together maybe this is season nine of doc of of house of, Str of house how strange house of, of, <laughs> the of, Strange House, of yeah. Doctor, Doctor Strange House. Season nine <laughs> is when he gets cancer, and maybe he goes on a mystic journey to the east to try to solve his cancer. He just sees Doctor Strange on, like, LinkedIn looking <laughs> perfect and like, wait a second, I remember wait, him. Wait a second, he looks that, he looks good. Yeah. He he's broke just, his hands, he looks good. He's Although, on Instagram just, like, posing, looking beautiful. He's got that svelte, like, you can see his ribs kind of svelte six-pack. He's like, oh, he's got those monk six-packs. Yeah. Oh, man. There's no way he has oh, cancer. Man. I gotta go see I what's, go going, see on what's going on here. going on. And debunk it and prove that he has cancer after all. <laughs> Could these two get along when, if they got together? I no. mean, how's showing up to... No. They, they hated each other. Oh, oh. rivals. Yeah, they yeah. They were rivals. They hated each other. And, like, they picked on each other all the time. They made fun of each other all the time. They would, like, anytime one guy was like, oh, I'm having fun on Facebook... The other one would have to like come into the comments and be like, fuck you. <laughs> like, as you do on as Facebook. As you do on Facebook. So like I think that they did not get along at all. They were they were enemies. Right. Because uh Strange is the top in his field, neuroscience, yeah, uh, and, yeah. and neurosurgery. And House is the top of his field and, and diagnosis, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Diagnosticianing. Which sounds like a very made up field. It like a conveniently does. TV it made up does. field. It certainly <laughs> does. I'm an expert in grids. I'm a gridologist. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, I think that they hated each other. Mm -hmm. And that's it. what makes. So their meat cute is hating each other. <laughs> and that's All what right. pays off later. When Doctor Strange has gone through his transformation, Doctor House goes looking for his transformation, and he's just like, 
I'm gonna have to swallow my pride. I'm gonna have to go to this <laughs> asshole who I fucking hate. But he I'm starts gonna... popping pills because he's yeah, so mad. So mad about oh, I'm gonna take seventy Xanax right now. <laughs> and he shows up at the at the at the at the door of Kamartaj, and Doctor Strange already knows that he's coming because he's the sorcerer, goddamn supreme. Mm-hmm. And he just like opens the door and he's like, Doctor House, <laughs> please come in. I love this. Dr. House opens the door is like, fuck face, what's up? All right, yeah. Dr. Yeah, Dr. House is like, fuck face, what's up? And Dr. Strange is like, namaste. No, yeah. He's like, namaste to you as well. Like, House he like levitates just... him inside. He's like, how did you do this? I yeah. feel like House, if he was like, open the, if the door opened and he was greeted by name and then told him, he'd be like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and no. would just like limp away with his cane. Just be like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. So, so. And Doctor Strange isn't gonna chase him. Okay, you came to me and then you turned away. All right, bye. Like he's like, you were an asshole. Uh, I was willing to give you a chance, and you're still an asshole. So bye. Can House swallow his pride in order to heal himself? It is a struggle that he has often on the show. I, I think, I think what would happen? I think if Doctor Strange were to display magic to him, uh, then he would. He would want to change. He'd be like. Okay, if you can learn that, I can learn that. Oh, so he yeah. starts studying magic I think just to say, just just to be like, fuck you to yeah, Dr. Strange. I think, it's, I think it becomes a competition for House. He's like, wait, you can do this? I can do it better. <laughs> oh, I'm the man. Sorcerer Supreme. Anybody could be that. I'm going to be Sorcerer Emperor Supreme. Yeah. I'm going to be Emperor Sorcerer Supreme Supreme. And I'm going to have my name in a wing in the hospital. <laughs> Take the that, house Dr. wing. <laughs> you don't have the strange wing, do you? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, I, I, so they hate each other. Uh, ten years later, like Dr. Strange was in an accident and House was like middle fingers to the air, like, fuck that guy, get out of here anyway. Like, haha, get a better neurosurgeon in here. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Strange is gone for a decade, but then House gets cancer and he sees Dr. Strange on Insta. He's just like, namaste bitches, check my shit out. (laughs) And, and, uh, he's, and House is like, oh man, Strange, God, that guy, oh, oh, I can do this. I can do this. So he He healed his hands. I can do this too. So he becomes a student. He of become, the mystic arts. He would be the most troublesome student there. There would be prostitutes coming in to give him massages. Oh <laughs> He's like discovered whatever the uh, equivalent of Vicodin is in magic. The magic Vicodin, yeah. <laughs> And he's just like popping him like, what? This helps me study. He's you like, gonna judge me? Oh, if I use this spell, I can t- I can turn this apple into Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Strange is like, that's not really, mm, well, mm. technically, we're all one with the universe, and all energy comes back to the source, and House is just smoking opium oh, furiously. Yeah. We're supposed to protect the multiverse and our, our particular, like, level of reality, and you're making Vicodin out of apples, so... House is crushing up all the infinity stones and oh, just snorting. snorting a, oh, the power! Yeah, oh, yeah. I feel it! Uh, so what gets these two together romantically? We are shipping them, of course. Is this a... a I think <laughs> what it is, so Doctor Strange has this thing where he's like, like, sort of like God's lonely soldier, like God's lonely man. He's like, I'm the only one who can bear this burden. And like, there's a bit of ego to that, but there's also a bit of truth to it where like the Sorcerer Supreme is a mantle that only one person can have. And there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. You know, only one person can be the president. Um, you know, it, 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 it say what you will. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think for him, it's like, he's very austere. He like, he, he tries to loosen up and have fun, but he just cannot. Like he doesn't make a lot of jokes. He's not very loose. He's very like, focused and hyper focused and he's always in work mode and house is not so oh. i think that the two of them have something to teach each other he walks into house's room one day and he's just playing the piano because house was a musician he played yeah. he played guitar a lot he mm-hmm. plays piano and it is like one of those things that ways those ways that he expresses himself a lot so maybe he see that's like that little spark that Dr. Strange sees that this is a guy who can connect to his emotions, mm-hmm. even if it's only in certain ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love the idea of strange all of a sudden now having something to prove to house <laughs> where he's like, I can be fun. I can get wild. <laughs> I can be fun. I can, I can have a good time. Watch this. I can hover. <laughs> yeah. 
Look uh, at me shimmy with my cape. I was like, that's not impressive. That's not impressive. Give me, give me the cloak of levitation. I'll show by, you how to have fun. By the it. notes of Never to Lear, I will. <laughs> and he's just like, he's trying to play music with spells. With spells, and like, it's working. He's like, I've duplicated this piano three times, and I have two ghosts playing each one. Oh, oh. but House is just like, oh, but you're not doing it right here. Let me show you. And he just reaches and it's around. Like ghost, and yeah, like, <laughs> it's a full-on Swayze ghost situation. Yeah. So Doctor Strange and Doctor House connect over music. Does this turn into a musical halfway through? Is oh, that what's happening? Fuck yes, I, absolutely. I can see that happening. Or at but, least there's a musical number. But it's magic. So like, you know what I think has to happen? Like House gets starts loosening up Doctor Strange, but like he just he just can't get there. And then finally House is like, bro take this and he gives him like some like cocaine or some LSD <laughs> or some, some ecstasy and, 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 and strange is like, no, I can, no, I'm the sorcerer Supreme. I can't. He's like, can't you? <laughs> and then like, this he, stuff is great for opening up your third yeah, eye. <laughs> yeah. He takes he, your fourth eye. Yeah, <laughs> your, yeah. your third eye is open. Your fourth eye. Uh, uh, my butt. Yeah. Um, uh, exactly. It requires it, a ton of molly. <laughs> So like whatever drug he gives him, that's what loosens up Doctor Strange. But then all the wacky shit starts happening because now Doctor Strange is like, he's not focused. He's like not paying attention to anything. Oh no. So like the world is actually starting to fall apart because House is actually breaking through to Doctor Strange. <laughs> Like and 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 turning him into a fun guy. <laughs> Stephen Strange having fun is. Go Are you saying Stephen Strange having fun is going to destroy the world? Yeah. Have you read a Doctor Strange comic? <laughs> <laughs> that's so hot, though, because then that's the ultimate like forbidden fruit, mm -hmm. and you know Doctor House would be into that too. It's yeah. like. Oh, this is a guy where if I get him to like get horny enough, the world will, will end. end. Yeah. That is a challenge for Dr. House. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, because Dr. Strange has had countless girlfriends and they all end the same with him going, if I'm in a relationship, um, I can't focus on protecting reality. So this is a series of pranks where Dr. House is just, like, finding ways to, like, sexily distract Strange. Yes. In order to cause problems <laughs> amongst the multiverse. Well, I don't think he wants to cause problems, but I do think that he maybe, like... I think he sees it as fun, though. It's like he, it's like him yeah. causing chaos yeah, in the hospital true. for that Cuddy. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That is true. That is true. That is true. Yeah. He doesn't want the world to end. He doesn't want the hospital to break down. And when it gets to that, he'll like he'll help out. He'll help he'll, out. He'll pull back. He, he knows a little bit of magic now, so he can help like repair mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But he wants to cause as much chaos as he can. Doctor yeah. House is like chaotic good, so he wants that's something fair. crazy He's a to happen. Yeah. He's a trickster. Yeah. yeah. Doctor Strange, can you help me with my downward dog? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Just really get up in there and show me how it's done. Show me how it's done. <laughs> show I me mean, how it's done. We keep saying who, that they're both the top of their fields, but who's the top <laughs> <laughs> in this field? I feel I, like it's got to be Doctor Strange, I, right? I, I you, know, you know what it is? They're going into alternate dimensions where somehow they're both the top. Because the gravity and, oh, and it's, life it's just like doesn't behave the well, way that it does they're going in this They go plane. into other dimensions where it's like it's non-Euclidean. It's just like time and space don't exist the same way here, which means that space can be like like possessed at the same time. <laughs> so like Doctor Strange and Doctor House are existing in the exact same plane at the exact same time, <laughs> and they're just like dancing around each other, but like they're also each other. Yeah. Doctor Strange is like kicks in House's door, like, I figured it out! <laughs> we can fuck in the Euclidean zone! <laughs> we can fuck in a non Euclidean geometry! Yes! <laughs> Let me show you all the things I can do with that cane. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Let's so, get into our astral forms. <laughs> <laughs> so the big thing is, these two, are, there's some sexy times going on, but. Doctor Strange does need to fulfill his job as Sorcerer so, Supreme. It's I, only a matter of time before Dormammu catches yeah. on and comes for them. The uh, first act would be them hating each other mm -hmm. and like revisiting old times and how much they hated each other, but slowly falling in love. 
And then the midpoint would be, I think we're actually falling for each other. Let's go to this non Euclidean <laughs> yeah. space and like fuck each other at the same time in our astral forms or whatever. Uh, and then, then there's your, your false high of the whole story, yeah. and, and then, then everything goes and then down. Everything crashes <laughs> because the plane that they went to is 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 ruled over by none other than the Lord of Chaos himself, Shuma Garath. Oh no! <laughs> and Shuma Garath is just like, oh, he's in love. <laughs> so when Doctor Strange and Doctor House come back, and Doctor Strange is all on like, woo, let's do more cocaine, bitches. Uh, and like finger guns to the air, but actual fireworks are shooting out of his hands. Uh, like things start to crumble. Like the reality is crumbling a little bit. There's glitching in the matrix and Dr. Strange is like, ah, oh, what, what did I miss? What did I miss? What did I miss? <laughs> and then sure enough, Shuma Garath. And he's like, oh, I let my guard down. Oh, I hate you, Dr. House. <laughs> is Dr. It? House is like, it, it's important to loosen up. You got to loosen up. And he's like, no, I told you I can't do that. Look what happened. Dark Knight of the Soul, baby. Dark Knight of the Soul, and that yeah. becomes the second half of the first act, or the, uh, the second no. act. It's so sad. But so I think, uh, like, getting to the end, like, mm -hmm. fast forwarding a little bit, mm -hmm. these two are going to have to break up, right? That's going to be the sad decision yeah. that Doctor Strange has to, to make is yep. for the betterment, for the safety of the universe, yep. he has to break up with Doctor yep. House. He has to. because, But in his heart, he'll always love him. I think that's sweet. Like I, I, I think that he's like I think that they come to the end and uh they're they're fighting each other for like, you know, that fifteen page Dark Knight of the Soul kind of area of the movie. Uh and like, oh, they're not gonna end up together. This is so sad. I know oh, their relationship was actually really beautiful. Uh, but like for the better of the universe. But then Doctor House comes in at the last minute with the last minute save of Doctor Strange, and he's like, Oh, this villain has a thyroid problem. <laughs> if we introduce 10 milligrams. <laughs> yes. Yes. 10 milligrams oh my God, of yes. escoprilazam, then that we'll be brilliant. able to. That is brilliant. <laughs> yes. He has this one, it, like there's an epiphany moment right around, right as they, as like the fourth commercial break comes in because it's both a movie and, and, and a TV show seven, now. Seven seasons and a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I know exactly what it is. What? No time. <laughs> Rushes off. Say they, they, we got the wrong diagnosis. You have to do this. Oh, and then Dr. House like jumps in and like sacrifices himself. And Dr. Strange being like having like necro necromantic magics himself is able to like wrest the astral form from him and kind of resurrect him in a way. And, he, and then Dr. House is like, I see why you don't have fun. I'm really sorry that I did that to you. I, I, I get I get the pressures of what you're up against, and I'm sorry that I, I tempted the fates in that way. But he leaves pulling one last prank on Strange mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. by dosing his his tea with LSD with a full one dose of LSD. One last <laughs> time. One last time, and Doctor Strange is like, mm, it's a little sweet. <laughs> As Doctor House Sad Hulk hitchhikes back to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> sad Hulk hitchhikes. <laughs> like, I, I think I, I think you can just say sad hulks. Like I think you can make that a verb. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't have to say hitchhikes. He sad hulks back to Jersey. <laughs> like, oh, he's sad hulking. Oh, this is so sad. Uh yeah, I had a sad hulk all the way here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm so so sorry. That's oh hulk. man. So as we get so we know how this wraps up, but we gotta ask after hearing all this. Dr. House and Dr. Strange, do you ship it? I feel like the, the answer has to be no, because shipping it means our own destruction. It's a wish ship. They each wish that they could ship, but <laughs> because of the nature of what Dr. Strange has to do, they, they cannot. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Dr. House could continue to try and be a master of the mystic arts and work with Dr. Strange and be someone like Wong or Clear or someone like that, but oh, it's just too hot. It's it's too tempting. Yeah. Dr. House wants to be able to live his life, and Dr. Strange has to be able to live his, because if he doesn't, we all die. And let me just say, what a hell of a way to go. If, like, I yeah. have to be torn <laughs> apart because Dr. Strange is tripping on acid while just having the most intense orgasm of his life, like... 
in a whole other plane of existence. That's just, a good story, man. <laughs> good, that's pretty epic. Yeah. You're at the pearly gates, and you're next to some guys like, oh, I died of typhoid. How did you die? Oh, nothing. Just my <laughs> astral form was torn asunder. <laughs> <laughs> because the Sorcerer Supreme was fucking his friend. Yeah. How did you die? Brick fell on my head. <laughs> yeah, well, mm -hmm. who has the more interesting story? Greg does. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. Make sure that you tell us if you ship it for Dr. House and Dr. Strange. We'll be right back with our next environmental ship. Hmm. Hmm. That's a tease. And we're back. And this one... All right, I'm gonna cop to it. I came up with this one. <laughs> Jesus, Zach. <laughs> I look. I thought about it. I had. I wrote this one down a little while ago, and I was just like, I gotta, I gotta find out the Lorax <laughs> from Doctor Seuss and Thanos from Marvel. Obviously, uh, uh, the, does Thanos have the Infinity Gauntlet yet? We, we'll have to figure it out. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I, got... I didn't know if you had a starting point yet. I didn't know which <laughs> Thanos you were talking about. We're, we're talking about the MCU Thanos. Because they're both environmentalists, you guys. Well, mm, <laughs> I think you're really uh, trolling some Fox News definitions of environmentalists. No, Zach. That's, that's Thanos at the end of the day. Thanos, it, look, you can disagree with his methods all you want, <laughs> but he wants to make planets and people so better. He wants to bring life back to the universe. That's his whole thing is the proper balance of life. There's a thing in the Marvel universe and the comics called the cancer verse. And the cancer verse is where death died and life just doesn't die. Like there's no such thing as death in the cancer verse. And the, uh, according to Marvel, the logical conclusion to a cancer verse is that everyone turns fucking evil. And they all murder each other all the time. And they're like hungry for murder because no one dies. So it's just fun to chop people up and they just reappear later. Like they're just reborn out of the earth. So I could see the Lorax getting bloodlust like that all <laughs> that checks out. Well, that's so. the whole thing. The Lorax <laughs> just is like you can't chop down the trees because it's going to ruin the planet. Yeah. And Thanos, while well, he doesn't focus on the trees as much as the people, they have the same end game. If you will. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, I, like, there, there is an element of Thanos where he's like, if life is allowed to run unchecked, then uh, we will run out of resources. Which is the really the mission statement of the Lorax, just said in rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I, I, I can see this in the sense that, like, look, this is a bizarro universe in which the Lorax has been pushed too far. And now he is going to team up with whomever he needs to to get these goddamn sneeds from stop being yes. made. Yes, get the Onesler out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Onesler, thank you. But that's the thing, he's, he's, he's reached dire straits. I mean, like, somebody set the forest on fire, he's gotta do something, and he gets his hands on an infinity stone. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I like that. The Lorax, I think, gets his hands on like the power stone and no. is gonna take down the Onceler. May, may I suggest, it's not the power stone, it's the soul stone. Because the oh. Lorax would be able, I, I feel like the Lorax would be able to wield the, like actually be able to wield the soul stone. Because he's like very pure, he's, a, he, like, he's good. Uh, like what thing his... does he sacrifice that he loves? Oh, does he kill a tree to get the soul stone? I think, I think he has to kill a tree. He has to chop down a tree he, to get the soul he stone. He chops down a tree to get the soul stone, yes. <laughs> and it lands on the hoover. <laughs> it lands on a speck of dust and wipes out an entire uh, universe. Yeah. I'm sorry, young tree, but I must chop you down. <laughs> for the Onesler has made this or place make this has made this place zero ground a yeah. or, or or perhaps he kills one of the brown barbalutes that live among the trees <laughs> he's like come here brown barbalute i'm so sorry but you you will die for a greater cause <laughs> That's horrific. Uh, but then in that scenario, okay, so he's obtained the soul stone and then it's Thanos coming to him. Yeah. It's not even a matter of 
uh, the Lorax having to go out, it's Thanos goes to Planet Seuss. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, that the Lorax lives on, and I think Thanos finds it as it's a, the SCU, the Seuss Cinematic, the Seuss yeah. Cinematic <laughs> Universe. <laughs> Thanos finds it, and it's a paradise. Yeah, it's this one weird place where like everything has gone right, and it just, he goes there because of the Soul Stone. He's in search. He's trying to fill out the Infinity Gauntlet. And maybe he he felt the power of the soul stone. Just like, poof, he's like, oh, that's the soul stone. I know where it's at now. Yeah. So he goes there, and is he just? How did you do this? Like, how do you wield the soul stone? Yeah, Lorax. <laughs> Teach me your ways, Lorax. Is there a battle between them? Is there like, because I, I imagine Thanos has a couple of Infinity Stones at this point, but there's like, he tries to just take it, because Thanos is so not one to ask Does favors. the Black Order show up with Thanos? Oh, yeah, he might. He probably would send down his children So first. like, he sends the children down first. And like Lorax wipes the floor with them. He wipes the floor with the Soul Stone. Like, all he has to do is just like, take their souls from them, and then they live in the Soul Stone. Like... They, their body dies, and their soul lives in the soul stone and contributes to its power. You will become food for my trees! <laughs> he just sucks up all their sucks souls. like, Ebony Ma, get in this! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, all the trees, like the roots just come out the ground and like absorb all of the dead bodies in this horrific Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, horror and they turn, into, they turn into trees and he sucks their soul in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, he turns them into trees? That's intense. Yeah, that's really, that's a fucked up battle scene. But man, I would love to see that played out in mm -hmm. like 4D. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you can really devote like the entire uh, computer graphics department of the Marvel Cinematic Universe to that, that's a good ass looking battle. But I mean, Thanos, Thanos wins fighting the Lorax. Like, there's, there's, like, even the Lorax with the Soul Stone, Thanos wins. Like, he, he does. Like, there's no, so. I mean, I, purely in a one on one fight, like, the Lorax yeah, is very yeah. tiny. Have you seen his arms? Yeah. Very ill defined. Very, yes, very. <laughs> that's, They're just sticks. Yeah, exactly. That's if they fight, though. No, I but mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Question. It's not, it's not gonna come to a fight. Yeah. It can't come to a fight because. Thanos wins. I so what they, is it that keeps Thanos from fighting the Lorax to just take the stone? I think it's that they connect. Because, the like, Thanos, is, Thanos doesn't just go in, like, punches blazing. Sure. He always, like, villain talks to, yeah. his, to his enemies. But when he starts villain talking to the Lorax, I think he hears a speech that sounds very in line with his outlook on the universe. <laughs> Thanos beams in and the Lorax is just on his farm watching a sunset. And he's like, wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> Your dream looks like mine. It's like, yes, Thanos. I'm just looking at the Trevolo trees. <laughs> They're you? all so healthy. <laughs> Life on my planet is balanced because of me. I How tell you, you this? must have respect for these trees, even ones such as tall as you, Thanos. So please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Take my soul stone and we will wreak havoc upon the universe. Uh, let us in find... which we inhabit. Oh, yes. 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 There we go. There we go. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's the bargaining chip is like Thanos gets in there. He explains what he wants to do. And he's like, how would you like the whole universe to be trees? <laughs> Well, that's like Captain Planet. <laughs> tree, tree, tree. <laughs> also I, a good pair. But yeah. I think that's like the bargain that they strike is that he's going to spread the truffle trees across the universe. Oh, he's going to. Oh, yeah. He's going to spread the truffle trees across the universe. And he's uh, and Thanos is like, you know, every planet has its own onecelers. There's a lot of onecelers out there. What if what if we got rid of all of the oncelers that would be half of the universe <laughs> yes yes i like this get rid of all the oncelers and spread the truffalo trees so the barbaloots will have a home you know on earth they call a oncelor iron man <laughs> 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 that's oh. what they call that it's just i don't know it's a weird dialect quirk <laughs> let's, let's go get this iron man <laughs> Here's my soul did stone. Did he make the iron out of the trees? Yes. Yes, 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 yes he did. So, they're 
the beginning of their relationship is based on lies. <laughs> As well, all good relationships are. It's Thanos. So, yeah. I'm just, I'm just pointing out there that that's a rocky place to start, and that's going to have to be addressed later on in the story. Absolutely. I, but that's the thing with, with Thanos is he, st- he doesn't start these any d- dynamic, any relationship he has with someone does not start from a positive place. Fair enough. It's always a lie with him. The question is... Once they start doing this, can they survive? Can they have a relationship? Can the relationship survive? And I would say that I think we fast forward a little bit through Infinity War, where uh-huh. Thanos like f- follows a very similar pattern to everything. He goes to Earth, battles the Avengers. The Lorax is like, he's in that sequence. You just don't notice Just him. don't see him. Because uh-huh. <laughs> he's up in those Wakandan trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's after... It's in those the, the that time after Infinity War where I think we really our our story really lives is Farmer Boy Thanos living on like where on he that was like, one on planet that one yeah. planet the Lorax is there with him and how does that go because that would be their like paradise they're living amongst the forest and the trees I mean it's exactly what the Lorax always wanted. Did did Thanos allow the uh, brown barbel loots to go to his home planet and live amongst the trees? I think he would have to. I think that's like a bargain then, that they struck. Then I think Lorax is happy. I think Lorax is like, yeah, let's fuck. <laughs> Are they having like a great relationship? I, I think they might just have an idyllic relationship living on this farm. No, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm completely agreeing. But oh ho, ho, ho. oh no! And then in game happens. Oh, they all Than, Lorax is off walk for a walk in the woods uh-huh, when the uh-huh. Avengers all show up and chop off Thanos', Thanos head. head. <laughs> Lorax comes back with like three or four of his like best friend brown barbaloots <laughs> and just falls to his knees weeping. Just no! And what we don't know is that Thanos did not destroy the Infinity Stones but he gave them to the Lorax as a, uh. as a wedding present. <laughs> They're in a ring. And the Lorax... He shrunk them down. He said he shrunk, he shrunk them, them down. down. He just and shrunk the them Lorax, down so they would fit on a band for the Lorax. Lorax puts the infinity ring onto his finger. He's like, I will get these Avengers. <laughs> Come, brown barbaloots. And he turns all the brown barbaloots into like giant mindless ones and they all go attack Earth. They chopped. They, they took what was mine. They chopped off your head. Now a rage infures me. I can only see red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying these rhymes yeah. too much. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so is a plot line of Endgame during that five year span. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, so, we can mm-hmm. actually fit this neatly into the canon. Mm-hmm. Is there a battle going on with some? Maybe it's just Captain Marvel who's like out in space somewhere fighting things. Is that like the Lorax is just finding different people to fight out there in search of the Avengers? Yes. And then he finally makes it back to Earth after the Avengers win in game and he ends them. Oh no. With his infinity ring. And he's like, This is the sequel. This is yes. what's coming up in 2022. Yeah. They just haven't announced it. <laughs> they just the haven't movie announced yet. it. Yeah, <laughs> Marvel this... Phase 4 is all Dr. Seuss <laughs> Is all Dr. Seuss <laughs> Lorax. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that Disney is acquiring everything, I'm pretty sure they can acquire the Seuss like, first. Oh my God, here comes the Annihilation Wave. Is it Annihilus? No. <laughs> is it Ultron and an AI uh, army? No. It's a little yellow brown guy with a weird mustache and he's got a lot of trees with him? I don't understand what's going on. Oh my God! And then they all die. <laughs> it's a cat in a hat! <laughs> it's a cat in a hat! <laughs> Green eggs and ham, we can't survive on this. <laughs> You've got your marvelous captains, your panthers of blacks, but can you survive the evil Lorax? Ah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God, you're the worst. I am terrible, <laughs> and I do not apologize for Nor it. Nor should you. That's very well done. Uh, but, but, so... I mean, we wrote the first story. The sequel is just out there to be told later Mm -hmm, mm because that's past the relationship. So that's for a different podcast to tackle. Completely different (laughs) podcast. The Lorax 
survives the death of his partner Thanos. They would have lived happily ever after yeah, they, on Farm Planet. On Farm Planet, they they had an 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 idyllic, wonderful existence, like peaceful. They loved each other. They farmed together. Uh, oh, it was great. It was great. And, and the Avengers, the Avengers it ruined it. Up. The Avengers ruined it. Two, two environmentalists that just couldn't catch a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the sound effect that plays when the Lorax comes back and just sees Thanos' head on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't catch a break. <laughs> oh my god! So. With that, we're going to take a quick break because I guess we destroyed the... We either saved or destroyed the universe depending on your perspective. Man, every all of these conversations have had such high stakes. Like, if Doctor <laughs> Strange is in love, the world ends. This might have been the highest stakes episode of Ships in the Night. And it's not even done. We still have the matchmaker segment to get through. Oh, man. So stick around to wait. see if we survive. We'll be right back. And we're back, and it's time to open the doors on our matchmaking service here at Ships in the Night. <laughs> we're going to find love for a single from fiction that Matt has brought us. Matt, why don't you tell us about who you've brought in today? Well, one of my favorite film franchises of all time is Bill and Ted. A very good choice. Thank you. Uh, as, as I've told uh, many of my friends, if the cost of admission to Bill and Ted 3 was to murder a person, I would go see Bill and Ted 3. Like I it, will stay out of your way. Yeah. Like, I am going to see that damn <laughs> I, movie. I'm glad. Can we just get you a subscription to A-List or something? I <laughs> yeah, think that no, might be more effective. No, no. I'm, if that's, I don't think that the cost of admission is going to be killing someone, to be fair. But if it were... I, I would go see that movie. We just so. don't know yet. No, yeah. you're right. We don't. AMC keeps <laughs> raising their prices. <laughs> <laughs> and Trump is still president, so who knows what's going to happen in a Ooh, year or two. Boy. This turned into a very old man conversation very <laughs> quick. Like, the movie prices are murder these days. <laughs> I used to be able to fill up my gas tank for a nickel. We're way off topic. Way off topic. So, uh, so you have I a think friend from that movie that you think we need to find love I, I do. Well, so like... Uh, I think one of the most um, underrated movies of all time is Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Mm. I think that movie is, it, it, it is it is not perfect, but to me, it is flawless. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, in that movie, there is an interesting character uh, named Station. Uh, station. All they say is yep. Station. All they can say is Station. Station is two tiny little weird booger looking <laughs> aliens from another planet who can combine together uh, into like a weird gelatinous mass uh, and then grow up into a super station, like, <laughs> like a seven foot station uh, and is smarter and stronger than the two of them separately. Uh, so, and, and when Bill and Ted take in death, go to heaven and they ask God, for the smartest being in the universe, they're like thinking they're going to get Einstein. Uh-uh. They get stationed. They get stationed. <laughs> stationed. Or huh? stations? <laughs> I'm not sure on the pronunciation pluralization of that. Well, all right. I think we can find love for station. Okay. This I'm excited to service. hear this. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna pitch you this. So, so I've thought about this, and I think that what Station really needs is... Because Station, by the end of that movie, he loves music. He finds mm -hmm. a new... And he wants somebody who's going to be able to express that mm -hmm. with him. And especially Super Station wants somebody of, like, a size that he can just yeah. say, I want to pair him up with Sweetums from the Muppets. We're talking about that big ogre-like uh -huh. uh -huh. monster. Now, Sweetums, if you go back to the Muppet Show, Sweetums sings all the time. Mm -hmm. He's got a lovely mm -hmm. voice. And I think if these two start working together on a new rock outfit, I think they're gonna find that they make as beautiful music as they do love. Now, think about that. These two, they, they're like, look, you could get bogged down in the aesthetic similarities, but I think it's deeper than that. I think that Sweetums has a lot of love that he needs to mm -hmm. foster. He's been chasing the Muppets. Mm -hmm. He just wants somebody to love him. And I think that Station will find 
his musical love in Sweetums. Wow. That was unexpected. <laughs> uh, and actually a really good pitch. As it usually is here at Chips and the Knife, we always try to think outside the box. And I know Greg, who loves thinking outside the box, is going to have somebody else. Just in, just in case, because we've got to give you two options. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't be a good ding. Look, you can't. You don't just get one swipe when yeah. you go on the apps. you got to have a bunch to swipe through. We've got two here. It's Greg. So Station, as Zach so rightfully pointed out, at the end of the movie, loves playing them drums. Mm -hmm. But something that Zach didn't quite pick up on, Station also very resourceful. Built giant robots yeah. out of some stuff that they found at a hardware store. I'm thinking, what are some other tiny creatures that love making music, love uh -huh. assembling stuff together? I'm thinking, it's got to be those Ewoks from Star Wars, baby. Now, granted, Station is a little more mechanically inclined. Mm -hmm. But remember, those Ewoks, they use resources to create all sorts of traps together. Yeah. They end up playing uh, dead guys' heads as bongos at the end of that movie. And as we all know in the Star Wars canon, when you smush two Ewoks together, you get a Chewbacca. <laughs> so I think that it's the perfect combination musically, mechanically, and also biologically. I think Greg's trying to, like, short-circuit my nerd brain with that one. <laughs> I was like, is, is that where Wookiees come from? Oh, yeah, that's, no, that's for sure. You, the, you didn't the, see the Blu-ray extended cut, I, baby? I guess I did. I guess I didn't. Like, do they, do they put the Ewoks on a rocket and launch them to Kashyyyk where they just, like, crash and combine? <laughs> Deleted scene that we never knew about. George Lucas is like, well, at the time, we didn't have the technological innovations that we well, needed. We didn't have the that? technological innovations to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually kind of close to the, the actual reason that there's no Wookie, other Wookiees in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was too violent, they said. But sure. anyway, different story. So, Matt, do you have any questions for us before we try to rebut each other's arguments? And uh, so, is so my question to you, mm -hmm. Greg, uh, is is Station marrying the entire village? <laughs> Like is this, are they is is Station going to live in a polyamorous relationship with the entirety of Ewok culture? It's a fair question. Do you have any holes to poke in Zach's uh, glorious Muppet theory? Fair okay, how does Sweetums get along? Get around Station not being able to say anything other than Station. It's a fair question. Let's do it. So I think what it comes down to is Sweetums, as a Muppet, has dealt with all kinds of language barriers. If he can get along with Beaker. He can learn to get along with Station. There's all kinds of different things that you can that you learn to live with as a Muppet. And that's the thing. Those flexible jaws, you think Super Station's not going to get some fun out of the big flexible jaw that Sweetums has? It's going to be so, oh, they're going to make some, you're going to need to turn up your music because of the noises that they will make. He'll be saying the word Station very loudly. Wow. Well done. Uh... uh Greg? Yeah. Poly polyamory question, please. He's the smartest being in the universe. Of course he's in a polyamorous relationship. That's like the baseline. Now, granted, you're gonna have the main rock of the relationship is the Ewok that plays the heads as bongos mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. the end. But Station is a being that is not only uh, intelligent in the sense of like able to build robots, but like emotionally intelligent. So emotionally intelligent that they can support a relationship with an entire colony of Ewoks. So yeah, Ooh. Station is fucking all the Ewoks in this movie. We can only set up your, your friend Station on one date, mm -hmm. but you have to decide. Who do you want to set your friend up with? Sweetums or... The entire the Ewok race. <laughs> I... I just for the strange novelty of it, I, I kind of want to see him with the Ewok race. Yeah! Like, I, I, I like Sweetums. I think Sweetums is, like, such an, like, left field, oh, my God, I didn't think of that, like, answer, and I'm, <laughs> I'm in love with it so much, and I really want to be able to choose that, but the entire Ewok village is such a weird, <laughs> like, one Ewok. No, Sweetums. The entire Ewok village... I'm listening. Yeah. Uh, you're listening. You're watching. You're titillated, I uh, would dare say. And, 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 and to be also, uh, 
the Muppets have Beaker and Honeydew. They have their geniuses to create their weird shit. That's true. I would love to see what Station did with the Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> like, if Station is the smartest fucking being in the universe, and he has these cute, cuddly, we all love each other, like, village and community and culture, I would love to see what they turn that into. Like, could they make a Death Star that, <laughs> like, instead of killing people, was actually, like, turning planets into, like... Little like, indoors, gi like giant little like polyamorous indoors, where the entire inhabitants of the planet just start fucking each other. Like uh, we're all in love with each other because of it's like the, the Care station Bear Death station. Star. Yeah, yeah. The Care Bear Death Star made by it's the Station Station, which is the Care Bear Death Star. So Station turns them. He becomes like the leader of this sexual commune of uh -huh. Ewoks, uh -huh. and then spreads free love across uh -huh. the universe. Ooh, this is. This is a uh, galactic equivalent to the uh, documentary Wild Wild Country. <laughs> like God. like that cult, that cult leader and the weird thing that all happened up into like the the nor northern America. I can't remember what state it was, like Wyoming or North Dakota or whatever it was. Station succeeds where the '60s failed, man. <laughs> and again, the stakes of the ship turned the universe upside down. That's what I do. For the third time in one episode. That's a record, unquestionably. That's what I do. Uh, then again, I think we have done some uh, some matchmaker segments that destroyed the universe here and there. <laughs> um, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. I I'm sorry that it took me so long to come in. This was Busy man, but I I'm glad that I finally got a chance to do it. This was more ridiculous than I could have ever predicted. Uh, if people want to keep up with you and uh, eat, and either praise or shame you uh -huh. as part of what happened today, mm -hmm. where can they go? Uh, my Twitter is uh, at the Matt Key, so T H E uh, M A T T K U I, uh, and uh, my Instagram is very confusing. Uh, it is Java Shambhala. Uh, it's very confusing. I'm already uh, confused, which makes sense. I get. I love. I, I, get I love it. coffee, and my one of my favorite Doctor Strange books is Into Shambhala. So yep. Java Shambhala, combine it. I follow you there. Yeah. And I'm Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. You can also follow my other podcast that Matt used to be the uh, the lead I created host of. It. That I, we met working on that show, yeah, and then now I'm I'm hosting it again. I created that uh, show in 2014. That's so. That's too many years ago. I know. Well, speaking of creating it long ago. In like a week from now, on October 17th, Marvel will be celebrating the 250th episode of the podcast. Insane. And I'm excited to say that Matt Key will be coming back to the yeah. show that like, day. I think this is the first time in two years I've been on that. It's going to be a blast. I still have to plan what that episode's going to look like because we're going to have be filling that room with people. Awesome. It's going to be a blast. So tune in October 17th, 1 p.m. on Popcorn Talk, and then afterwards on all your all your podcast spots. Uh, yeah, yeah. Greg, where can everyone find you? You can find me on the tweets at Greg Goodness. You can also find me performing occasionally at the Pack Theater in beautiful, sunny Hollywood, California. And make sure that you follow the podcast itself on Twitter and Instagram at Shipping Pod. Send us your ideas for what ships we should tackle next. We have some fun stuff coming up October. We're going to get into some horror ships yeah, soon. Yeah. That's going to be a blast. And we want to know who you think we should investigate next. Until next time, guys, this has been Ships in the Night, casting off.